Hey, Dr. Amy here, and in this video, I'm showing you four factors that lead to cancer. You are not gonna wanna miss this. Whether you've just been diagnosed with cancer, in treatment, or even if you're just at high risk of developing cancer, this video is for you. There are many factors that lead to cancer, but here are the big four that you need to know about and avoid. Starting with number one, being at an unhealthy body weight. Being overweight or obese significantly increases your risk of developing cancer. This increases your risk of several types of cancer, including breast cancer, colorectal cancer, uterine cancer, or pancreatic cancer. Now, I know this is hard to hear, especially as a cancer survivor myself. When I went through cancer treatment, I ended up gaining weight not losing weight. This is what happens to the majority of women who are going through cancer treatment. We know about 60% of women end up gaining weight. Surgery restrictions, steroids, stress eating, hormonal imbalances. There are a lot of reasons why you could potentially gain weight. But I also knew as a cancer survivor that I wanted to do everything in my power to lower my risk of a cancer recurrence. And that meant getting back to a healthy body weight. Now you might be wondering, what's the connection? Why does body weight matter when it comes to cancer? What's the connection here? Well, the first is inflammation. Carrying around extra fat tissue produces inflammation and this chronic long-term inflammation in your body can lead to cancer. We also know that fat tissue is not just a storage container for extra calories. It produces hormones like estrogen or insulin, which can cause cancer cells to grow. This is especially concerning for women with hormone positive breast cancer. And when we carry around this extra fat, these hormones can be imbalanced and that can contribute to cancer. But there is good news. This is all within your control. Studies have shown that even modest weight loss can reduce those inflammatory markers and help to prevent cancer. Maintaining a healthy body weight after cancer is something that's 100% possible for you. Even if you're in forced menopause or on drugs like tamoxifen or anastrozole, you just need the right strategy for your body now after cancer. Many clients come to me in the Cancer Freedom Program for support with losing weight after cancer. And we have about a 96% success rate in getting you to your goal weight once we get the right strategy in place. You can learn more about the Cancer Freedom Program by clicking the link below in the description. Okay, but on to the next factor that leads to cancer, genetics. Now, every single one of us has a unique genetic code that makes us who we are. But sometimes there are changes or mutations in the code that can lead to cancer. Cancer begins when cells in the body grow uncontrollably. This happens when there are mutations in the genes that regulate cell growth. These mutations can either be inherited from your parents or they can develop spontaneously due to environmental factors. Now, obviously we do not control the genes that we inherit. If you're a BRCA carrier or you have Lynch syndrome, then there's not much you can do to change this. But there are still a lot of strategies you can use to lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence. Despite popular belief, we know that only about 10% of cancers develop because of the genetic factors that we inherit. But there are many genetic factors that result spontaneously from mutations that develop over time. This is due to exposures throughout our lifetime and definitely something that we have control of. To give you a better idea, think of your body as a well-oiled machine. There are instructions in your DNA that keep everything running efficiently and smoothly. They tell your cells when to grow, when to divide, when to die. But when these instructions are corrupt, your body starts malfunctioning. The cells begin growing and dividing and they don't stop and eventually lead to a tumor. Now, of course, some genetic mutations are inherited like the BRCA1 or BRCA2, which will significantly increase your risk of both breast and ovarian cancer. But other mutations happen sporadically, meaning that they develop throughout your lifetime from environmental exposures. And that actually brings me to the next factor that leads to cancer, environmental exposures. Our surroundings have a big impact in our risk of cancer, from air pollution to smoking or asbestos and radon. We're constantly exposed to harmful chemicals and pollutants that can trigger cancer. Now, of course, you know about smoking and asbestos and how they can lead to cancer. So let's talk about some factors that you may not have heard of. Environmental exposure to microplastics can increase your risk of cancer as they can be 
hormonally disturbing. Microplastics are all around us in our environment, but there are strategies to lower your exposure. Instead of using plastic food containers, use glass or stainless steel food containers. And definitely do not heat up your food in a plastic container. This will significantly increase the microplastic leaching into your food. Now, many people often forget about testing their homes for radon. We are seeing an upswing in the number of people that are being diagnosed with lung cancer, but yet they've never smoked. It's estimated that radon causes as much as 14% of lung cancer diagnoses. And it is very simple to test your house for radon. Many jurisdictions will offer a free or a very affordable test kit. Where I live, I got one delivered right to my door for around 60 bucks. We are also aware of environmental exposures. You might think there's not much you can do about environmental toxins. If you live in a highly polluted area or it's really populated, what's there to be done? But you can still reduce your toxin load inside your home. Invest in an air purifier to minimize your exposure while you're sleeping or even while you work from home. This could reduce your toxin load by half. Okay, but on to the next factor that leads to cancer, and this is a big one, and most people are not doing this well. Remove processed foods from your diet. Processed foods are often high in sugar, unhealthy fats, and sodium, all of which can contribute to a cancer diagnosis. Now, when many people think about processed foods, they're thinking of fast foods. But most people that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program, they are not eating fast food. They're already trying to be healthy, and this is likely the same for you. But there are processed foods that can sneak into your diet and cause harm. The most common is processed meats. Things like hot dogs, bacon, or deli meats. These are particularly concerning. These foods have been linked to increasing the risk of cancer and are classified as a group one carcinogen. This means that there is enough scientific evidence to directly tie them to causing cancer. It's concerning because many health-focused people will still eat a sandwich every day. That's natural. But eating this amount of processed meats can actually increase your risk of cancer by about 18%. Now, when we start talking about removing processed meat from your diet, you might be thinking, well, what the heck am I gonna eat? Like, what should I replace it with? Like, what are you supposed to eat for lunch if you can't pack a sandwich? And what are you supposed to pack in your kid's lunch? So let me help you with that. I'm gonna link up my recipe book below. This is 100 simple cancer recovery recipes for women. This is an amazing place to start and they're family-friendly recipes. But there are other highly processed foods you need to be aware of. These are things like sugary snacks or sugary drinks. Having the excess calories from sugar can lead to weight gain, inflammation, and eventually lead to cancer. There's a tremendous amount of sugar in some foods, but we often forget about it. For example, Starbucks drinks. Some of these drinks have high amounts of sugar that's just sneaking into your diet. So to lower your risk of cancer, focus on eating whole foods. Things that are unprocessed like fruits and vegetables and lean protein. Of course, you want to eat foods that are are as close to their natural form as possible. These foods are rich in both antioxidants and fiber, and this is exactly what you need to lower your risk of cancer. While cancer is a complex disease that involves many factors, it's important to know these big four. Of course, when it comes to cancer, or even life, nothing is guaranteed. There's nothing you can do to 100% guarantee that you're never gonna have cancer or a cancer recurrence. But you do have control. You can significantly lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence by implementing some of these strategies. Just by making these changes, you can lower your risk of cancer by more than 60%. This is a huge impact. Plus, this impact is gonna ensure that you live a healthier life overall. This is gonna protect you from cancer, but also other health concerns, like heart attacks or strokes or diabetes. The goal of many cancer survivors is to not only live a long life, but to live the healthiest life possible. Putting these strategies in place is gonna help you do exactly that. Okay, so now that you know about these four factors that lead to cancer, the next thing that you need to dig into is exactly what foods to avoid to prevent cancer. That's why I'm linking up this next video for you here. Click the link here and I'll see you in the next video.